Chemical burns can be frightening and in some cases extremely serious, but knowing what to do in the moments after exposure can make a huge difference to recovery as well as outcome. I'm Dr. Donovan and in this video I'll walk you through what chemical burns are, who's most at risk, what causes them and symptoms, and we'll also cover what to do straight away if a chemical burn happens, how they're treated and when to seek emergency medical help. So what exactly is a chemical burn? Well, a chemical burn is an injury caused by a harsh or corrosive substance. This might be something like bleach, drain cleaner, or an industrial solvent. Now these chemicals can burn the outer layer of your skin, and if not removed quickly, they can go deeper, damaging tissues underneath. Now typically, most chemical burns happen when something is spilled or splashed onto the skin or into the eyes, but they can also happen if a chemical is inhaled or swallowed, which can damage the throat, the lungs, or the stomach from the inside. Now some burns are relatively mild and they heal with time, but others can cause permanent scarring, internal damage, or in severe cases, be life-threatening. And that is why it is important to take any chemical burn seriously, even if the area looks small or doesn't seem too painful at first. So who's most at risk? Well, chemical burns can affect anyone, but some people are more likely to be exposed in their day-to-day -day lives. So if you work in construction, agriculture, laboratories, factories, plumbing or mechanics, you may come into contact with powerful chemicals as part of your job. Military personnel may also be exposed to corrosive substances in some environments. And children, especially toddlers, are another high-risk group because they might accidentally touch or swallow cleaning products that are left within reach. And because their skin is thinner and their bodies are still developing, the damage can be more severe. So even at home, simple tasks like using drain cleaner or mixing cleaning products can lead to accidental injuries if not handled carefully. So what kinds of substances can cause chemical burns? Well, to be honest, a wide range of products can cause chemical burns, including some that you might have under your kitchen sink or in your garage that you might consider harmless. At home, common culprits include bleach, toilet cleaners, disinfectants, hair dyes, as well as drain and blockers. In industrial settings, you might come across battery acid, rust removers, paint strippers, pesticides, and fertilizers. Now, both acidic substances like hydrochloric acid and alkaline substances like ammonia or sodium hydroxide can cause chemical burns. Now, alkaline burns tend to go deeper and can continue to damage tissue long after contact, especially if they're not rinsed off properly. And that's why it's essential to act quickly and follow the right steps if a burn happens, and we'll discuss this later in the video. So what are the symptoms that you need to look out for? Well, the symptoms are going to depend on the chemical involved, how long it was in contact with the body, and the area that was affected. Now, if a chemical touches your skin, you might feel a stinging or burning sensation. The skin might become red, depending on your skin type, swollen, blistered, cracked, or even blackened in severe cases. However, on black or brown skin, you might not see obvious redness. Instead, look for skin discoloration, warmth, tenderness, or a change in texture. Now, if the chemical gets into your eyes, symptoms can include pain, stinging, watering, blurry vision, or swelling of the eyelids, as well as a strong urge to close the eye. Now, if the exposure is severe, they may be vision loss or damage to the cornea. Now, if a chemical is swallowed or inhaled, it can cause pain or burning in the mouth and throat, drooling, hoarseness, even chest pain, feeling sick, difficulty breathing or vomiting. Now, some internal injuries may not be visible, but they can be very serious or even life-threatening. Now, because symptoms can take time to develop, it's always safest to treat any chemical exposure as a medical emergency. So you're probably wondering what should you do if a chemical burn happens? Well, acting quickly is vital. The first goal is to remove the chemical to stop it from spreading. So start by removing any clothing or jewelry that has come into contact with the substance. If you're helping someone else, protect yourself by wearing gloves or a cloth barrier to avoid yourself being harmed. Now, if the chemical is a dry powder like lime or some fertilizers, gently brush it off without rubbing. Wiping can push the chemical further into the skin. Now next, rinse the affected area with cool, running water for at least 20 to 30 minutes. Use a shower or tap if you can, and try to keep the contaminated water from running over other areas of the body. 
If the eyes are affected, hold the eyelids apart and flush gently with clean water or saline for at least 15 to 30 minutes. Blink often to help the liquid move across the surface of the eye. Now, if a chemical has been swallowed, encourage small sips of water to help dilute it, but do not induce vomiting. Vomiting, a corrosive substance, can cause even more damage as it comes back up through the throat. Some chemicals, like phenol or dry metal compounds, might require different treatment. But if you're not sure, always get medical help straight away. And that is the most important thing to seek emergency care. Now, with chemical burns, it's usually best to seek medical care help immediately, even if the burn seems small or not too painful at first. Burns can evolve over time and get worse if untreated. Now, you should call for emergency help if the burn affects the eyes, face, hands, feet, genitals, or joints, it covers a large area or appears deep, if the person is having difficulty breathing, coughing, or swallowing, the chemical was swallowed or inhaled, the person feels faint, confused, or unwell. But a general rule of thumb is, if you've got a chemical injury, it's always best to seek medical attention. Now, if you're in the UK, dial 999. In the US, call 911, or whichever country, call the emergency numbers, which do vary depending on your country. So, what will happen in hospital? Well, at the hospital, the medical team will assess the burn. They may continue rinsing the area, apply sterile dressings, and give the person pain relief. Now, if there's a risk of infection, you might be given antibiotic creams or intravenous antibiotics, and for more serious burns, you may require surgery to remove damaged tissue or a skin graft to help the area heal, and this will typically be done by the plastic surgery team. Now, if the burn affected your eyes, you'll be assessed by an eye specialist, called an ophthalmologist, to check for any permanent damage. If you swallowed a chemical, you might need blood tests, imaging scans, or a procedure that is called an endoscopy to look inside your throat and stomach, and this is where a small tube with a camera on the end gets passed through the nose and takes a look at the inside of the stomach. So what's the outlook? Well, most mild chemical burns do heal well, often within a couple of weeks, and leave little to no scarring. But Deeper burns can cause complications. These can include scarring, skin discoloration, vision loss, or narrowing of the food pipe if the burn was internal. In rare cases, there is a small increased risk of certain cancers if certain tissues were badly damaged, and that is why proper care and urgent care makes a big difference to recovery. Now, another question is, can chemical burns be prevented? Well, the answer is yes. Many chemical burns are preventable with a few practical steps. At home, always keep chemicals in their original containers, properly labeled and well out of children's reach. You might want to add secure locks to doors. Another important tip is to never mix cleaning products, especially bleach and ammonia, because this can produce very dangerous fumes. Now, if you're using strong chemicals at work or for DIY, Make sure you wear the right protective equipment. You can never be too safe, so gloves, goggles, aprons, and masks. And always read safety instructions carefully and try to work in a well-ventilated area. And make sure you know what to do in case of accidental exposure. Keeping emergency numbers handy and having a basic first aid kit at home or in the workplace can make a big difference. So in conclusion, chemical burns are very serious injuries that can happen in an instant, but if you act quickly, rinse thoroughly, and seek the right medical care, many of these injuries can be treated successfully and their long-term effects minimized. If you did find this video useful or you want to learn more, please check out the description box. I've included lots of useful evidence-based links there. Thank you for watching, and why not check out this video next?